Back in 2019, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker film came out, and it premiered to controversial ratings. Some people loved it, some people were disappointed by it. I was one of the people that really liked it, but it felt a little bit too similar to some of Martin Scorsese's other movies. But then the film just chugged along at the box office, making over a billion dollars. And then at the Oscars that year, it was the most nominated film, and Joaquin Phoenix won Best Actor. Cut to this year in 2024, we now have the official sequel where everyone's returning. Joaquin Phoenix is back playing Arthur Fleck. Todd Phillips is writing and directing again. And this time we have Lady Gaga playing Harley Quinn. And after watching the movie, I can say this. It was a fascinating watch to the point where it ended. I muttered to myself, what the fuck did I just watch? What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, I'm going to be discussing Joker Folly Ado, or Joker 2, in a non-spoiler light. I'm going to try my best to stay as spoiler-free as possible. I will not be giving away the ending, but I will be telling you about how the ending sucks. But that's for later in the video. With that said, I'm definitely interested in hearing your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section, so leave your thoughts down there, hit that like and subscribe button, and if you don't know what Joker Folly Ado is about, well, it's about Arthur Fleck, who is now institutionalized at Arkham, awaiting trial for his crimes as the Joker. While struggling with his dual identity, Arthur not only stumbles upon true love, but also finds the music that's always been inside of him. And that's about as much as I can say without getting into spoilers in terms of the story. There's been a lot of conversation about Joker Folly Ado. A lot of people don't think a sequel was needed. I was one of those people. I took for the first one what it was. I would have liked to them to have just taken other darker sides of characters from the DC universe, like a Poison Ivy. Do like a, a thriller, a revenge thriller in the vein of like Kill Bill with her. That would be pretty sick and grounded in reality. I'd like that. But no, Warner Brothers decided to green light and probably push and pressure Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix to come back and make another film. And now we have Joker 2, which is like a very fascinating watch to me because really much leading up to this film, it premiered at a film festival to kind of mixed reviews, but like some people saying that they liked it more than the first one and how like it's a masterclass. And later on, more reactions started to come out a couple weeks ago where the film was kind of being panned. I didn't really see a lot of positive buzz. And then Monday, the fan screenings happen and they were really bad. I don't think I saw a single positive review. Cut to tonight. I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to go into this pretty open-minded. I want to like this movie. I want to like it. I want to like it more than the first. And I thought, okay, you know what? If it's different, like vastly different and not just copying a Martin Scorsese film or One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest or whatever this film was looking to probably copy again, I, I think I might like it. I think I might be in the minority where I'm going to be like, yeah, the musical elements work. This work, this work. This was a more fascinating look at Arthur Fleck. And specifically the fact that they were diving into the dual identity of Arthur Fleck and the Joker, that intrigued me in like maybe having a split personality. I was interested to see what substance they could pertain to this movie. And, I mean, honestly, like, the reactions were kind of true. Still found myself baffled at that because the first hour and a half, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was loving this movie. I was loving the first hour and a half of this film. Maybe, like, the first hour, I didn't really check the time, but it felt like an hour and a half. And then I shit you not, at that halfway point, it just slowly started to dive bomb and it it blows me away it's like they just stopped trying and yeah uh there, there's a lot of issues with this movie but i like starting with the positive so let's kind of head towards that route and just get it out of the way of course walking phoenix one of the greatest actors working right now and he is phenomenal in Joker Folly Ado. He's great in the original. Of course, he won an Oscar for that. And I think he's about almost as good as this. I don't think the material is as strong as it was in the first film. I don't think he has any big gratifying moments. Like, of course, when he pulls the trigger on live television in the first film. But this film does have decent moments. I think he does a good job with the musical moments. I think I liked some of the interpretations and the dances and... 
in a way, like, I appreciate what Phoenix was going for with Arthur Fleck in here and finishing out his storyline and specifically the way that this film feels like an epilogue, an extended epilogue of some sorts to the first one. And then it goes to also the Lady Gaga, which I thought was good. Not great, but good as Harley Quinn. Didn't blow my mind, but again, that is not her fault. She does as much as she can with the script. Again, first hour and a half of her, phenomenal. Then the back half just kind of doesn't do anything with her. And it just felt like the material wasn't that strong for her. Very much is a Walking Phoenix centered film with Lady Gaga for the most part, but a lot of this is Phoenix, and that's okay, just like the first one. Never takes away or stems away from Arthur Fleck himself and what he's going through. And continuing with those pros, I liked what they did with Arthur Fleck for the most part. I liked how they, again, touched in and kept continuing the same path of mental illness and specifically their ideas on it and how it affects our society and how us as a society treats those with it. Now, I don't think it's as great, but it really has nothing new to say and it just kind of hammers home the same ideas of the first film. It didn't bother me that they didn't continue more of a conversation. I feel like it it could have needed it, but it's whatever at that point. Of course, yes, the score, phenomenal. Cinematography, beautiful. This is one of the best looking movies of the year. There is no problem with that. Production design, exquisite. And that's where I feel like I kind of lose out on my pros. Oh, I guess one other thing. The intro to this movie, really clever. Really, really clever. Like, honestly, like, it's this really cool animated style thing. I'm not going to go into, like, what it's an homage to. But I thought it was very touching. And in the way, it was kind of the perfect way to realm me and wheel me back into Arthur Fleck's realm of mind. And for some reason, it just put me right into his mode and specifically in how his thought process works. And I think that's why like the first hour to an hour and a half really works for this is because you're really diving into him and his time at Arkham and what he is going through with this trial and what people are trying to pull and push within the political nature of this trial and what they're trying to establish. And that's about it. So let's dive more into my mixed aspects. Which the biggest mixed aspect I have about this movie is the musical element. And the reason I'm mixed on it is because I think some of it works and some of it doesn't. And I think the reason I'm mostly mixed with it is I don't feel in the end of the day that it fully works for the story being told. Now, the way it's set up, the idea of it actually like fits from the first film. Arthur Fleck danced a lot. He did a lot of those motions. I mean, the bathroom scene is like one of the most iconic ones. Of course, adding in Harley Quinn in here, and to, you know, musicals can sometimes be associated with romance. You have that folie a deux type thing here. I like that. And again, as it's introduced, I actually wasn't, I didn't have an issue with it. But it's as it continues on. And as I felt that it continued on, it took away from certain moments. And I feel that there was two things that really would have made this work. Because like the first hour and a half of it, it's good. It's solid. But the back half, it feels like it takes away from so many different moments. And I feel like there was a story that could have been told here that would have been a little bit more creative, not as surface level, still got around the same point of view with these two and what the political nature of pulling side by side of how our society wants to interact with, of course, mental illness could have really still worked here. And then, of course, had the musical element. But it just always took away from what they were trying to say. And it felt like, you know, the point of a music in some of these songs is to tell a wide ranging story and to tell what the characters are feeling and it's just so on the nose. I think one of the biggest disappointments of that musical aspect is the fact that it's just covers. I think it would have been more clever to actually write original music for the movie. I think that actually would have worked better for every single one of those contexts. And I feel like maybe would have even added more substance to the material at hand. For me, was the reason that I was so mixed. It just felt like I was just like in the middle of the film, I was like, okay, I'm a little bit over this. And then that also kind of just goes and extends to my issues with the movie, which starts off with the runtime. 
Two hours and 18 minutes, it's way too long. Again, cut out some of those musical moments. I think it actually would help give context to certain things and actually move the pacing a little bit faster. Alongside that, the biggest issue I have with this movie, bar none, the biggest issue I have with this movie is the last 20 minutes. The last 20 minutes, it's it's like, like I mentioned, it's like they stopped trying. The last 20 minutes is like they really stopped trying. The film looks gorgeous. The performances are still there. But the story takes such a fucking nosedive that it baffled me. I honestly, in recent memory, I have not thought of, I, I honestly cannot think of, and please let me know down below in the comment section if you can think of one, but I cannot think of a movie where you watch and you're like, oh, this is good. And then you see the ending and you're like, holy fuck, that was terrible. That was a terrible ending. You really don't want to just keep like trying to rant off, but it, it it's one of those endings that makes me almost not like the first one anymore. It just took away so much substance and material of what this movie was trying to say as well as the first one. Again, as I was driving on the way home, I look back at this entire film and it's fascinating to me because they built it up and it's really good for the first hour and a half. And then it just nose dives into nothing, into nothing where it, like there's no thought provoking nature like the first one left me with. It leaves me with unsatisfaction. Hard to talk about without getting into spoilers, but Joker Volley Ado is a fascinating watch that amounts to almost nothing. Uh, it starts off intriguing as it slowly brings you back to Arthur Fleck's reality and with the introduction of Harley introducing intriguing elements, but it literally falls apart in the last 20 minutes almost completely. It took away from anything the film was trying to say, and it honestly just rubbed me completely wrong. I think there is clever ideas in this movie that are amounted to nothing and clever things that are trying to be cemented here that just can't be pushed forward. Fleck is performed amazingly by Joaquin Phoenix and I think Lady Gaga does as much as she can with the script here. But as I drove on my way home, I thought of a better, more cohesive and clever story gotten the same message around and it felt like a great sequel off the original. Be some fans of that ending. There will be some fans of the entire film. And I hope you like this movie more than me. But that last 20 minutes lost me completely. It makes me not able to recommend this movie, which sucks. Because when I was like baffled by people's reactions when I was watching the first hour, I'm like, this film must go to shit. And it pretty much did. So with all that said, I'm going to give Joker Folly Ado a C minus anchored this close going to a d plus but that first hour and a half is good and again it is mixed and i can see some people liking it but for me it's hard for me to still recommend this movie if you love the original you might be pissed off at this if you didn't love the original maybe you'll enjoy it a little bit more i don't know but with all that said guys i don't have a lot more to say because the film just kind of left me speechless and not in the best way. So thank you so much again, guys, for watching. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.